First a brief introduction, I'm Daniel, and today I will be the narrator for this, and possibly many other videos from Lone Mad Might, since he doesn't feel like doing any of this himself aside from writing this, no, he's not doing this, because he's a pussy. Let's get into this. Game Boy Advance. Well would you look at that, this console is over 20 years old, and I figured what better way to celebrate, than to making a video expressing why I never quite liked this handheld. I'm not saying it is one of the worst portable systems out there, it's certainly no virtual boy, but even for the time this thing came out, it could have been so much more than what it is. The first thing I didn't like about the Game Boy Advance was the fact that the first model of it had a screen with no backlight, which made it difficult to tell what was going on when playing a game, especially if you don't have some source of light. This was honestly unacceptable, no matter what way you look at it, because before they made the GBASP, Nintendo made the Game Boy Light, a version of the original Game Boy that had a backlight screen. And while I wasn't able to find info on the original retail price of the Game Boy Light, I doubt that adding light made it a lot more expensive than a Game Boy Pocket. This step down was also present when they made the Game Boy Color. The next problem I have with the system has to do with the non-backlit screen problem I just mentioned, and that is how many games had to compensate by making the color palette brighter than what it was supposed to be. This meant that, if you played a Game Boy Advance game on a screen that had light, the game's graphics would look incorrect color-wise, due to how they were made brighter to help you see the game image on the Game Boy Advance screen, but even then, this barely helped, it was still a hassle to see what was going on. Now to be fair, not every game had this problem, some games would allow you to make the color palette look normal and not brighter, but very few Game Boy Advance games had this option. I assume it was, because making two versions of the color palette for the game was time consuming. Here's a demonstration of a few GBA games I know of, that do offer the option to play without a brighter palette for the graphics, this should give a better grasp on what I'm talking about. So yeah, it is rather nice to have that option, if you are playing on a screen that most likely has light. The biggest offender on this is how Nintendo themselves never really bothered to add a feature like this on their games, and it doesn't seem like they have bothered to fix the color palette of their GBA games. Whenever they re-release the games digitally, there is simply no excuse to not do it. Especially because they did actually bother to tone down the flashy effects of their Super Nintendo games when they released them on the virtual console. The next problem also has to do with the screen, because the resolution of the GBA screen was usually too low for most games, especially games that were ports of Mega Drive slash Genesis games, or Super Nintendo games, since they would usually have big sprites that, while the GBA could have handled with very little slowdown, it was usually ruined by the low ref screen. And because scaling down the sprites was time consuming, most developers didn't bother to adapt the graphics of their classic games, and even when some did, that meant the graphics would take a hit in quality, especially if they weren't corrected, after being scaled down. The next problem is the sound chip. You know, for a console called the Game Boy Advance, it sure produces not only kinda low quality sampled audio, but it also produces sound that can sometimes sound like something from the original Game Boy, and there is a good reason for that. You see, the sound chip on the Game Boy Advance also has the sound channels of the original Game Boy built in basically, and that is why there were some games that sounded like they were a regular Game Boy game. 
While I don't mind how the Game Boy sounds like, I do mind it when I hear the same noises on a game that may look advanced, but it does not sound like one. An upgraded version of the SPC sound chip found on the Super Nintendo would have been better, rather than having to use outdated sound channels, when developers didn't want to spend time figuring out how to use their own samples, while balancing the size of them, so they could fit on the cartridge and so on. I also want to mention how the first model used AA batteries, and there was no way of recharging them, I said that, because back in the days of the original Game Boy, there were many third party accessories for the console, one of them allowed you to recharge your AA batteries. I was honestly never a fan of having to buy batteries every time the current ones ran out, and yes, this alongside the non-backlit screen were corrected with the GBASP, but my point is, that those features should have been there day one, and even with that, the design of the GBASP is just not as comfortable to hold as the original design. So yeah, while the screen and the way the console was powered were improved, the new design on the SP was mostly a step down, a clear case of, if it's not broken, don't fix it. The next issue with the console, are the amount of buttons it has. While it is a step up from the previous Game Boy consoles, it is still not enough for say, fighting games. Sure, it is not a problem if you play an SNK game like the King of Fighters, since their fighting games only used 4 buttons, because SNK's Neo Geo console had 4 as well. But when it comes to the most popular fighting game out there, Street Fighter 2, 4 buttons is simply not enough. You know, if you are not going to bother to add more buttons then it would have been nice if you placed the select and start button closer to the B and A buttons. Even the GameCom and the Wonder Swan had more buttons, or even light on the screen, and those handheld consoles came out a few years earlier. And if you want a better example, that came out a bit later than the GBA then there is the N-Gage. Sure, the screen wasn't as wide, but at least it had light, not to mention that the game seemed more advanced. Another complaint beyond the actual console is in the packaging for the games. I don't mind the cartridge format for the games aside of the faulty battery save they had, that almost always died on me, at least from my experience with GBA cards. Now, if you don't know what that thing is, then let me explain. It is the circular thing inside the cartridge that allows you to save your progress in the game, and if that thing dies, not only you lose your save data, but you also cannot save at all. But I digress. What I was talking about is how the games came on cardboard boxes just like the games for pretty much all of the Nintendo consoles of the generation prior to the GBA and GameCube. The N-Gage was ahead of the GBA once again, because while inserting the game on an N-Gage was a hassle, at least the game came on a solid plastic case. Oh well, at least for the Nintendo DS, they finally used plastic cases for the packaging. And there you go, that is all of the rambling I have regarding the Game Boy Advance. Now like I said earlier, it is not the worst handheld console of all time, nor is it the worst portable console I have used, it is functional enough, it is just that I think it could have been more than what it is. If it was a console made by a small company, then maybe I wouldn't mind too much, but Nintendo even to this day, they are not a small company, and I'm aware of how Nintendo loves to give less to the consumer and charge more than what they should charge for their products. These annoyances I mentioned, are something I noticed after plenty of years playing GBA games, and they just show how out of touch and cheap Nintendo is sometimes. And I guess it doesn't help that I didn't have a GBA when it was popular, so I don't have any nostalgia for it. The first time I got to play some GBA games was via a Nintendo DS, and some of the games had a broken battery save. Now to be fair, that wasn't the first time I had to deal with that. I also remember I had a Super Nintendo game that had a broken battery as well. And before you tell me, I didn't know what the problem was at the time, so I wasn't able to fix it by replacing the battery save, because I simply didn't know any better. Although, even though I didn't own a GBA back in the early to mid 2000s, I do remember that I did get to see a Model 1 GBA at that time, and I do remember the non-backlit screen being pretty dark. So in that sense, I'm kinda glad I didn't have the console during its first couple of years, cause it was going to be obsolete soon. 
Now I get why many people seem to love this console. Most people weren't going to be aware that they could've had much more. But that is it for this video. Bye for now.